Defiance 2050, the reboot of the somewhat ill-fated third-person shooter Defiance, made its way into open beta recently. I finally got some time to sit down with it, and to be honest, I've enjoyed it so far. I'm Colt for MMOHuts.com, and here's my first look at Defiance 2050. As I mentioned, Defiance 2050 is a reboot of the original Defiance game. I've never played the original, so this video is from the perspective of completely fresh eyes to the series. The story of Defiance 2050 is standard sci-fi network fare. You play the role of a privately contracted space operative working alongside actual military forces arriving on a planet as a reinforcement. Honestly, I don't want to give too much of the story away because as far as MMOs go, it's actually pretty good. The voice acting and scripting are well executed, with one minor exception. Everyone in the game keeps saying shtaco like they're in the 6th grade and they don't want their mom to hear them drop a cuss. Just say shit. Can we please just say shit, please? I can't imagine that in the far future of 20 whenever the hell this happened, we've evolved so far beyond such a perfectly practical and all-purpose cuss word. That gripe aside, the story and presentation are good stuff. Visually, the game looks great in motion, but you can tell it's a remaster. The original Defiance was built for the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. 2050 doesn't look bad at all, but it carries the look of a game that was remastered rather than completely remade. If slightly last-gen looking visuals are a turnoff for you, that could be a problem, I guess. I thought it looked fine, though. The game's controls are super tight and responsive. The location of the dodge key is questionable, mapped to left alt by default, but a simple remap or use of a controller fixes it immediately. Shots from your guns go exactly where you'd expect them to and don't seem to have any bullet drop. You get to play as one of four classes, each with their own abilities. I've been spending a lot of my time with the game so far with the Assault class. They get a lot of talents and abilities that involve staying in fights at mid-range for as long as possible and pumping out as much damage as they can. They're a very effective hybrid class, and I've really enjoyed the rapid reloads and sprinting that their base abilities grant. Speaking of character creation, it's one of the lowest points of the Defiance experience. You get to choose between a few faces, hairstyles, and skin tones, but that's about it. There's no real fine-tuning of the features that I could find. As they say, they can't all be winners. Progression of the game is handled through traditional quests, both in the main story and as side quests. While the story is interesting, these aren't by far the coolest bits of content that Defiance has to offer. Defiance has world events, sort of like Guild Wars 2, that pop up everywhere and include things like rescue missions, horde mode missions, and plenty more. There are also world event raids, called Arc Falls, of varying sizes to participate in that are a ton of fun. In fact, another of my favorite things about Defiance 2050 is that it automatically pseudo-groups you with people doing the same mission or arc fall as you, shares credit for some of the objectives with you, and even shows you MVPs when the mission or arc fall concludes. This encourages players to step in and help one another more than other genre giants have been able to manage, and that alone is impressive. There were always people nearby if I felt like I was outgunned, and they've always been more than willing to help. In fact, I had a group of four randos who happened to be doing the same chain of side missions as me revive me from being down and then stick with me for the next two missions, all of us covering each other while we channeled objective items. It just occurred naturally, and that kind of experience is something I haven't had in an MMO in a long time. That's not to say the game is easy, though. The AI reminds me of hard or legendary difficulty in Halo 2. Definitely doable solo if you're competent, but the AI enemies are smart enough and they move around enough that if you're careless, you're gonna get dunked on. Don't despair if you do get downed, though, as nearby players can revive you, and if you haven't been down in a set period of time, you can revive yourself. If your self-revive is on cooldown and nobody is near, though, you'll have to extract, which takes you back to a certain point on the map that could be quite far away from your actual objective. Fortunately, the game gives you a cool mount, a rad four-wheeler like the Mongoose from Halo, almost right away. It's fast, has a turbo boost, and it handles pretty well. You can even do jumps and cool flips with it as you traverse the world. This thing will get you where you're going pretty quickly, so the extractions from dying hurt a lot less because of it. If you're really looking for a challenge, though, you'll want to hit up the challenge missions scattered throughout the map. These are almost identical to the challenge missions from Doom 2016. You interact with a portal on the map, and you're teleported to a small instance and given a super hard objective, a weapon, and a time limit. I've only really committed to one, and I still haven't beaten it yet. The one I was trying to do involved defending a certain point on the map with a shotgun against a massive wave of beefy melee enemies and surviving until the time runs out. It always started out fine, but so many of these guys would spawn that I would eventually get overrun. 
Once I have a more powerful shotgun, I think I'll give it another try. Monetization in Defiance 2050 isn't huge. There are a lot of cosmetic items, and there's even a new currency you can only get by completing in-game achievements. You can spend this new currency, called Valor, on Valor-exclusive items that can't be earned any other way. With cash, you can buy cosmetics, weapon mods, and weapon salvage crates. The mods improve your weapons, which could be seen as a slight pay-to-win advantage, but they're fully obtainable in-game relatively easily, and the boosts to the weapons that they offer aren't massive. The story is the same for weapon salvage. It's used in the game's weapon upgrade system, but it's a little harder to parse if this is bad or not. That's because upgrading a weapon through salvage does have a direct effect on the weapon's damage output. Weapons can only be upgraded so far based on quality before they're completely outclassed by a higher rarity of weapon, but you're free to make your own decision about this. All in all, Defiance 2050 is a fun experience and it's something I could definitely see myself going back to. Terrace, one of our new writers over at MMOHuts.com, has actually been streaming it on our new Twitch channel as well, so if you want to see more of the game in action, head on over to www.twitch.tv slash MMOHutsLive. There's a link down in the description. Well, that's all for today. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, make sure you subscribe, and keep it locked on MMOHuts.com for all the latest gaming news and reviews.